I have been using the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 for three weeks now, and I am loving it. This is the first time I've used an Apple Watch Ultra. Last year, I just continued my usage of the Series 7. It worked fine for me, but I am loving the Ultra. The biggest difference for me is the bigger screen size. Having the bigger screen makes it a lot easier to use different apps and even type on it, which makes the Apple Watch Ultra useful to me more regularly and I'm not having to jump to my iPhone all the time. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Let's get into it. I want to start by talking about the design. Now, the design didn't change from the original Apple Watch Ultra, the Ultra 2. It's the same design. You put them side by side, you won't be able to tell the difference. But as somebody that is coming from a, a regular series Apple Watch, and that's kind of the approach of this video is, is, is you know, hey, I'm, I'm jumping from the regular series of Apple Watch to the Apple Watch Ultra. It's really nice to mix things up. I've been a regular Apple Watch user since the original Apple Watch. I did do a small stint there where I just wasn't wearing an Apple Watch at all and went to mechanical watches because I was just, I was having some hard times dealing with notifications and then I realized, oh, hey, maybe you don't need every notification that goes to your iPhone to also go to your watch. I was a bit worried about the size of the Ultra. It is very, very big, especially compared to the regular series watch. Even the bigger of the two series watch, it is still quite a bit bigger. It's not just bigger screen size, but it's also quite a bit thicker as well. But in my opinion, I think it looks really good. At least it looks good on me. I have big hands, so it kind of just works with that. I was really worried it was going to be really heavy just by looking at images and seeing other people wear it. It, it looks like it's just one of those things to be dragging your wrist down like, ah, uh, it's, it's not. It, 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 honestly, it just feels like an Apple Watch. I don't really notice that the fact that it's the Ultra compared to uh, what I used to wear, which was an aluminum Series 7. I always did the aluminum. I never did the stainless steel or any of the addition ones. But at the end of the day, it's just nice to mix things up. The, the regular Apple Watch, the regular line of Apple Watches, has had the same design-ish since the original. It's changed a little bit. The screen's got a little bit bigger. It's not as boxy. But for the most part, it's kind of had that same design language. So it's nice to get something that's completely different to wear. My biggest complaint overall about the design of the Apple Watch Ultra is there's no colors. You just have the silver titanium look. Uh, and while it looks really nice, and what I do like is it has these orange accents on the digital crown and the action button is orange. As far as watch faces go, I'm using the new modular ultra watch face. I'm just fully embracing the fact that I am wearing a computer on my wrist. I'm not even trying to hide the fact that like, oh, it's a computer, so I'll just put an analog watch face or something on there. Nope, I'm just I'm just going full on embracing it. I'm using the ultra blue color theme and also the small hour, minute and second clock. To me, this looks like the best combo. And as far as the bezel setting goes, I'm using depth. I don't scuba dive at all, but I didn't like the second hand. It just, you know, it seemed to refresh every second. But really the second hand was just a bit too much for me and the depth one looks good. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects you and your data. I worked in the IT field for about nine years, and one day we decided we we're gonna set up a fake coffee shop. And the idea of this was we're gonna see what information we could scoop off other people's computers. It was honestly kind of scary how much data we were able to get off other computers just on a public Wi-Fi network. With Surfshark, your traffic is completely encrypted from your device to its destination, protecting your privacy. This isn't about a, uh, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to worry about kind of thing. Data is the new gold and some really sketchy people will do some really scary things to get a hold of it. One thing I really appreciate about Surfshark is they don't keep logs. Keeping logs kind of defeats the whole purpose of using a VPN. With Surfshark, you're able to change where your computer's location is coming from. This means you can use Surfshark to see what streaming services offer in other countries like the UK or France or Canada. Or if you're traveling abroad and you want to access your streaming service, but they have a different library or aren't available in the country that you're in, you could use Surfshark to route back to your home country and watch that service. I really like Surfshark. In fact, I paid for it myself out of my own pocket a couple of years ago. I'm going to put a link in the description below to where you can go check it out. Use code LOLLY at checkout to get an extra three months for free. 
As far as complications go, in the top left, I'm using carrot weather. This is the high-low complication with the feels-like temperature. Activity is in the top center. In the top right is Fantastical. This is the day-date complication. And I can tap on this to see my next appointment. The center complication is now playing. I use this all day long to play pause or skip to the next song or go back. It's just really handy to have right there on my wrist. And obviously it's not just limited to Apple Watch playback. It works with the iPhone and it works with HomePods as well. In the bottom left is things. I use this to see what tasks are due for the day. And I can also check tasks off as completed in the things app on the watch. The ring around the complication will fill up as you complete tasks for the day. This is really great for ADHD. Timery is in the bottom center. I use this to make sure I'm time tracking when I'm supposed to be time tracking. I can also just tap on this and start a timer from right in the watch app. Now the last complication is drafts. Now Obsidian is my note taking app right now. It's the one that I've just kind of been using for all of my writing, scripts, notes, research, projects, whatever. But because it's file based, Obsidian doesn't work on the watch at all. It needs files on iOS or iPadOS or Finder on macOS in order to work. None of that is on the watch. So what I've been doing is I've been using drafts to actually dictate notes. And I made this shortcut here but there's some setup that you have to do. You have to go into drafts, settings, Apple Watch, and specify that all watch drafts have the watch tag. In drafts, set up a new workspace called watch. This should just filter for the watch tag. Now go into shortcuts and set up a timed personal automation. Now I actually have four of these that go off at multiple different times throughout the day. And I pointed to this shortcut, drafts dictate to Obsidian. Now, because of the way shortcuts works, just dictate a test note to drafts and then run the shortcut manually one time. You have to give it permission, so make sure you run it manually just once so it gets all those permission prompts out of the way. What'll happen is it'll take all of those drafts that you dictated from your watch and it'll move them over to Obsidian. And then once they've been moved over to Obsidian, they will archive them in drafts. Extremely handy if you're an Obsidian user. I'll link to that shortcut and everything else I mentioned in the description below. Like I mentioned, the screen size makes a huge difference on the Apple Watch Ultra for me. Just having this bigger screen means I've been using my Apple Watch even more than what I already was. I'm actually able to type on the screen relatively easily and text is a lot easier to read thanks to the bigger screen. The Ultra 2 screen brightness also got bumped up. It now hits 3000 nits peak brightness. So that means if you're out in direct sunlight and it's just beating down on the watch, it gets up to 3000 nits brightness and it's incredibly readable. It's very impressive what they did with that. Uh, I know like back in the original Apple Watch days, if you were in direct sunlight, good luck seeing it. When the Apple Watch Ultra 2 goes into its dimmed always on mode, it's still bright enough to where it looks like it's active. You can still glance down and see the time or check a complication. Then on top of that, there's night mode, which turns the brightness of the screen way down and puts this red tint on it. And I love this for watching movies. Before, I, there was sometimes where I would take the Apple Watch off because it would just light up the room if I gestured and it activated, it was just kind of annoying. So I would take it off. The action button is a fantastic addition. And especially now that it's on the iPhone Pro line, I'm loving it. I already made a video about how I'm using the action button. I'll link to that in the description below as well. It's a shortcut called Action Cut and it adapts to the different context I am in, showing me different options, whether I'm working or just hanging out at home or driving or whatever. The battery life on the Ultra 2 is extremely good. I get all day battery life guaranteed and, and some over. Like I, I, you could easily go all day, sleep track, no problem. Now I can't sleep with the Apple Watch on. I just can't fall asleep with jewelry or anything like that on. So I charge this at night. I don't, I don't even try and sleep track with it. No matter if I have a workout or a hike or whatever, whatever I do, 
the Apple Watch will have enough battery to get me through the day. And that was definitely not the case for my Series 7, especially towards the end there. If I did like an activity or went on a hike or round a golf or something like that, it would have to get put on the charger halfway through the day. Now, both of the Apple Watches have a new SIP. It's, it's the chip, it's the S9. I'm just bummed that Apple didn't call it the S9 SIP chip. Now, I'm not too worried about benchmarks, especially on the Apple Watch, but what the S9 SIP does enable is on-device Siri. That makes Siri requests go so much quicker, so much nicer. I found myself using Siri a lot more on the watch already, as opposed to the Siri 7, where it would have to reach out to servers in order to hit Siri requests. Dictation on the watch is also extremely accurate. I know that was a big part of iOS 17. I'm sure that was a part of watch OS 10 that it got the dictation features as well. And I use it all the time. Dictate messages, notes, like I talked about, um, all the time I'm using it. Double tap is coming in watch OS 10.1. Currently at the time of filming this watch OS 10.1 is in beta. Uh, I have it on my watch right here uh, and I've been really liking it. So what double tap is going to do is gonna allow you to take your pointer finger and your thumb and double tap them together. You're gonna be able to open up the smart widget stack uh, right from the, you know, the home screen of your watch. If you have now playing open, you're gonna be able to play pause. Uh, when a phone call comes in, you can double tap to answer the phone call. You can double tap to hang up as well. I've been really liking this, like when I have one hand full, like I'm doing something else. So like say I'm cooking and I need to pause something or actually a, a, an actual example of what happened is I was cooking, had my AirPods in and I was listening to music and I got a phone call. So I just double tapped to answer. I didn't mess with the screen. I didn't look for my iPhone. I just double tapped to answer. It routed to my AirPods and it worked like a champ. Now, the weird thing about Double Tap is there's no third-party API, so you're not gonna be able to use this in an app like Things to mark a task as completed, and it kind of feels broken like that. It feels half-baked that it works for some system features, but not third-party features, and some system features, it's not there at all. So, I hope it gets a little more cooked, um, and this isn't like the final iteration of it. I've really become fond of using my Apple Watch as a productivity device, or even a device for just quick interactions. I usually don't carry my phone with me throughout the house. My Apple Watch, when I'm home, is probably the device I interact with the most other than my iPad. For a lot of times I use it just to control playback to HomePods or AirPods, answer phone calls, I respond to text messages from it. Like I talked about, I take notes, mark stuff as completed in my task list. A lot of stuff that I would just need my iPhone for when I'm around my house, I can do right from my watch. Like I mentioned in my video about the action button, I you know change focus modes, add stuff to a grocery list or add stuff to my task list right from the watch. It's also just a really easy way to check to see what's next on my calendar without having to get out my phone. Heck, I can even start my car from my watch, which is wild. If you would have told like 10 year old, eight year old me that was just finished watching Knight Rider reruns, his eyes would have been like this. Overall, I am loving the Apple Watch Ultra. Design wise, it's something different. The bigger screen size makes it a more productive device and better battery life means I'm not having to coddle it halfway through the day to get it to the end of the day or worry about being next to a charger. This is a great upgrade over my Series 7. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.